What was that last year like for you with WWE? Oh, it's magic. Uh, it, I mean, you laugh thinking that I'm lying, but it's not. I'm, I don't know. Nobody else has said this. I loved wrestling in front of no people. I specifically loved wrestling in the performance center with no noise. Yeah. Because it was like, whoa, this is wild. I remember, like, was it you and AJ did like a two out of three falls match or something like that that was like really yeah, crazy? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm kind of proud of that, but that wasn't, that wasn't what I'm into. Okay. Because there were people there. They had the uh, oh, people the who were trained. Yeah, the NXT people who were like, they're not really cheering like any like a crowd would like emotionally, right? So they're just cheering because they're supposed to cheer. And then when it goes to commercial break, we stop and everybody just stops and everybody just sits down <laughs> and then they're like, Okay, what are we yeah. what are we gonna do next? Right? And uh but I love like the performance center with no Thunderdome, just like me and Drew Gulak. We're just doing, <laughs> yeah. doing wild stuff. I wrestled uh, Claudio, and uh, we were just talking about that the other day. It was a lot of fun. And yeah. then the, um, I was a little bit a part of the creative team. What was that like? Because I remember hearing that, that you were part of the creative team. And, like, how did that come about? And, like, even for you to, like, accept that position, we all know what that position can be like. Yeah. So, Obviously different for you, but. So the pandemic was happening. Um, Somebody in one of my segments, it was right before Bree was about to give birth to our son, Buddy. And it was like a month before that, somebody in one of my segments had gotten COVID. Oh, shit. And they called me and said, hey, you were in a segment with somebody who got COVID. A bunch of people in the segment got COVID. You might have COVID. I tested. I didn't have COVID. But then I said, I'm probably not coming to work. Yeah. I, I requested. I didn't say, like, hey, I'm absolutely not coming to work. I'd say, like hey, I don't think I should come to work. My wife's pregnant. We yeah. didn't, you know, uh, do soon. And so, so anyways, um, so they were completely fine with that. They were great with that. And then Bruce Pritchard called me and, uh, and said, hey, I know you're gone, but would you like to be a part of the creative team, be a part of the meetings and stuff like that, that they were doing all like through Zoom and all that kind of stuff anyways. And I said, yeah. And so uh, I did that. Huh. I, I loved it. Um, I know a lot of people have talked a lot of crap about writers or... Oh, thankless job. Yeah, it's but, a thankless yeah. job. I think there's a lot of smart, fun writers. Absolutely. Uh, that I loved working with. Uh, I would always think that, too, because, like, you see those writers, and, like, obviously they, they have amazing resumes. They are smart, brilliant people. You're just working within certain circumstances. But they're yeah. amazing. And so, and, like, there was a, there was a writer... I hope he still works there. I think sometimes, people sometimes reach out to me via text, but I never check my phone. And then I'm like, I have over 3,000 unread text yeah, messages Yeah, I'm pretty sure I texted phone. you months and months ago to do this show and you didn't <laughs> respond to me. <laughs> text, text is a bad way to get a hold of me. I'll text you, yeah, Bree next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, texting Bree is the most efficient way. To, <laughs> people uh, do that so, to me too. It's bullshit. People yeah. always message me for John. It's so not fair. Yeah, well, we've, we've, we've got the game figured out. Mm -hmm. You, uh, yeah. So, um. But, uh, so like Ryan Callahan, who was um, one of, if not the lead SmackDown writer at the time, we would talk about SmackDown sometimes on Mondays. He's like, hey, I'd like to run some ideas by you, and we talk. But then we just talk afterwards. Yeah. I, love, I, I love Ryan. Like, I loved dealing with Bruce Pritchard. Like, I know some people talk bad about Bruce. I love Bruce. Like, mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, I really enjoyed it. I loved working with the writers. Jen, I forget Jen. Jen Pepperman. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Jen is She's hilarious. She's yeah, yeah. And she won yeah. two Emmys. She's amazing. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like. So, people that want to, like, talk shit on the writing team, they are very qualified, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, well <laughs> they're, so you know. the, well, not only are they qualified, they're fun people to yeah. be around if you, if you're, if you can ex accept that they're not wrestlers. Yes. Right? Yeah. And they're just like, hey, this is a fun person to talk to. Yeah. Like, I, fi I found... Uh, God, uh, the, uh, Kirsch, 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 Kirsch. I knew it was going to be Kirsch. He, uh, he's the best. He's the best. Yeah, yeah love yeah. Kirsch. Yeah, so many, so many people are just so much fun. So what went, so you had such a great time. You ha I mean, shit, you look at the career you were able to have at WWE, you got to do so many amazing things. What came down to you deciding to part ways with them? So... I actually, so people think I had two options between WWE and AEW, and the reality is, was that I was considering three options, 
which was WWE, AEW, or just not being a full-time wrestler anymore and just being more of a full-time dad. Yeah. Um, when I told that to Brie with the money that each company was offering me, she, I think she wanted to kill me. She might, she might have, she might have wanted to kill me. And yeah, then, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that was, so, uh, but really it came down to a little bit schedule, um, a little bit of creative freedom, and also just this idea of I had been there for so long. Yeah. Maybe, so, maybe something a little bit new would be fun. Um, but then also, I, I also kind of wanted to bleed. And <laughs> okay. And so, which is a weird thing to say. Other... Let's unpack that a little bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, what, what is the deal? There is some. So, if you were to ask me to bleed right now, I, in front of however many people we have Call here, me the hard way, you brother. I would say, no thanks. That doesn't sound like fun. You get in front of a thousand people in the moment inside a wrestling ring bleeding there's something about it that just makes you feel very alive right it's just is like, it like the blood in your eyes in your mouth I you're don't know. fighting for your I life a I little harder i don't know what it is there's just something to it that it there's a magic to it there's a magic to it that i would like, like to conduct some kind of cross study on oh, a few of you guys you should i mean you should ask your husband because <laughs> Trust me, I know. he bleeds every match Comes most home. of the, most of the time, not on purpose. He came home last night. I fell asleep <laughs> early last night, so he slept on the couch to not wake up uh, the dogs and my daughter and all that. Uh, and he was like sleeping on the couch and I had his hoodie up, and I just like pulled it back to be like, "What are we working with here yeah. today?" But he was yeah. okay. He's fine. Nothing. Yeah. All good. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, the the bleeding thing is just this other. I don't understand it, but that's you do it every month. I oh well, <laughs> he's right. Is that? He's right. Wait a second. But we talked about fisting. We, were to, we just said fisting. <laughs> there wasn't any. There uh, wasn't a single O. Oh. Menstruation. Yeah, I mean, it's just like it's a natural part. But mine's natural. Mine's not like self-inflicted. Okay. Does that make a difference? Yeah, you probably don't enjoy it nearly as much. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Mine has like side symptoms that come with it. I, I'm in a really bad mood. I'm bloated. I'm yeah, hungry. Yeah, yeah, I'm upset. Yeah, yeah. It's all bad. Yeah. All all bad. Um, okay, so you wanted to go to AW, you wanted to do this different style, you kind of wanted to just, especially at this, this age as well, to like see what this, I don't want to call it like a last run, but like really strong years of like kind of being in your prime, right? Mm -hmm. Of just kind of figuring out like what else can you do? You're a man that is like a wrestler's wrestler. Was there also, I don't know if I like read this somewhere, was there an option of you maybe staying with WWE and also doing dates with New Japan? Yeah, I think they were trying to make that work out. Yeah. Which it eventually did not work out. Did not. So, um, which I think is good for everybody. 100%. So, definitely. So, yeah. So, what was the moments like between you leaving WWE and then going to AEW? Well, I took uh, five first time in my life. Um, and I just spent time with my kids. And we were in Tahoe. And we were hiking. And we were just doing... It was amazing. Yeah. Which is why the third option... <laughs> of not going anywhere was very appealing to me. I get it. Mm -hmm. I get it. When you get to spend time with your kids like that and just kind of step away, and you've already been able to scratch that itch for mm -hmm. so long. I mean, of course, there's things that you want to do and all that, but when you see your kids and you get to hang out with them, I definitely get, like, even times for me, I'm like, should I just hang at home with this baby right now? Because it's really a good time. Yeah. It's lovely. It's yeah. so, so nice. Um, let's go back to when you retired. Okay. What... What all went into, I mean, I know obviously the medical side of things of you having to retire, but having to go out and actually like cut that promo, we were in Washington when you retired as well, mm -hmm. right? Uh, your, your mom was in the crowd? My mom was in the crowd. A couple of my friends were in the crowd. Uh, yeah, it was weird because um, Vince McMahon had called me on the Saturday. It was a Monday when I came out and gave the speech. He called me on a Saturday and said, we're, we're not going to clear you. I'd, I'd like you to announce your retirement on Monday. Because people, at that point, it's getting close to WrestleMania. People are wanting me to come back. I'm wanting to come back. Like, let's just get everything out of the way. Don't give them hopes that Daniel Bryan's going to be back, all that kind of stuff. And uh, what better place to do it than in Seattle, where you're from, that sort of thing. And at first, I was like, oh, I got to think about it. And then I talked to Bree, 
Like, they're not going to let me wrestle. I might as well be able to do it in front of my friends and family in the building where my dad last saw me wrestle, yeah. which was, like, very emotional for me. Um, and so, yeah. So it was, uh, it, was, uh, it was a really hard day. <laughs> it was a hard day. 